has met you well. Take note of that. Your faith. He did not say your crying has made you well. He said your faith has made you well. This means Jesus Christ can see you all the times. But when he sees you without faith, he sees you without healing. He sees you without a miracle. Hallelujah. Amen. Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Permit me to ask you this question. What prompted Bartimaeus to keep shouting, Son of David, have mercy on me, when the entire crowd was telling him to be quiet? You agree with me that Bartimaeus was a man of vision, a man of faith. As a man of vision, as a man of faith, though he was blind physically, he had good spiritual eyesight. He could see what people with good eyesight could not see. Those with good spiritual eyesight see that beauty in Christ that will effectually draw them to run after him. Because in Christ Jesus, nothing is lacking while everything is necessary. Tell your neighbor, in Christ Jesus, Nothing is lacking. Why everything is necessary. May today be the day you will receive direction. Instruction. And the revelation you need. Yes. The Bible says, Bartimaeus sat by the roadside. You who are sitting by the roadside saying, I am blind. I am blind. I am sick. I'm poor. I have no job. I have no husband. I have no wife. I'm depressed. Does God not care about me? Why me of all this? Does God not care about me? Or is he just passing by? Chop! Bartimaeus, Bartimaeus cried out and the son of David stood still. May your crying out today make the son of David to stop in front of you. May you receive the same grace. In Jesus' name. Victory in Christ Jesus is victory indeed. Victory is in our faith, in our believing, and in our confessing. Let me take you to the book of Romans, chapter 10. Let's take our reading from verse 8. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your hearts. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess 
with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your hearts that God had that God has raised him from the dead you will be saved for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture says whoever believes on him will not be put to shame <laughs> hallelujah Going by this passage, we can understand that man is what he is by faith. We are what we are because of our capacity to believe. In other words, God cannot work through us except through our capacity to believe. God cannot work through us except through our capacity to believe. What is possible for me as an individual depends on my capacity to believe. Two things are required as conditions of belief. One, openly professing one's relationship with Jesus Christ. Two, total dependence upon him for everything and standing by him in all circumstances. The profession of faith alone the profession of faith with the mouth alone, without the power of it in the heart, is a mockery of the very fundamental article of the Christian faith. There must first be faith in the heart before there can be an acceptable confession with the mouth. For it is with the heart one belief unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Faith is both. Faith is what? Both. Failure to give Christ his proper place, his actual place in our hearts is actually responsible for the crisis of our faith. Failure to give Christ his proper place in our hearts is actually responsible for the crisis of our faith. Are you with me? Failure to give Christ his proper place in our hearts is actually responsible for the crisis of our faith. The management of the hearts and its thoughts is fundamental to our faith and holy living. The Bible advises us to give up our souls And our bodies. The Bible advises us to give up to God our souls and our bodies. That is, our souls in believing and our bodies in confessing the Lordship of Christ. Whoever believes in him shall never be put to shame. In Philippians 4, verse 13, when Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. 
He was equally saying that he had given up his soul to Christ in believing and his body in confessing the Lordship of Christ. That is the true sense of believing. That is the true sense of believing. Believing is the only condition for answered prayer. Our claims in Christ Jesus is our capacity to believe. Our capacity to believe must be strong enough to attract and accommodate all rights and privileges in Christ Jesus. If you realize that your capacity to believe, if you realize that your ability to believe is not enough, you can offer prayer of faith for it. And Jesus Christ will enlarge your spiritual coasts. But remember, prayer is not right if it does not spring from faith. The Bible says the very foundation for receiving answers to our prayers is to base our faith on the fact that Christ died to provide all we are asking for. What are you asking for? Healing? Deliverance? All of God's blessings? For him who believes. Do you believe? Do you believe? Yes. If you believe, let me see your hand. Yes. People of God, we are therefore required to respond in faith to the gospel message by believing that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. By his resurrection, Jesus Christ has demonstrated that he is worthy of being the object of our faith. By his resurrection, Jesus Christ has demonstrated that we can never be disappointed if we make him the center of our belief. By his resurrection, Jesus Christ has demonstrated that we can never be disappointed if we make him the center of our own world. Jesus Christ is all the world to me. He is my light, my life, my joy, my peace. He is my all. He is my strength. From day to day, without him, I will fall. When Jesus Christ said to the father of the demon-possessed boy in Mark 9, verse 23, everything is possible for him who believes. What does this mean? This simply means what is possible for me may not be possible for you. Why? It is possible for me because I have capacity to believe. What is possible for you may not be possible for me. Why? It is possible for you because you have capacity to believe. It is this belief and confession that brings about the power to do all things unto salvation. Miracles are wrought in the name of Jesus Christ, not by repeating the name as a good luck charm, but by believing in that name as a divine revelation of grace and goodwill to men. When Peter and John were brought before the judges, in the book of Acts, the contention of the adversary was not whether there was a miracle or not, 
But the legitimacy of their source of power. The elders asked Peter and John, the apostles, by what name or by what power did you do this? Peter said, we are called to account this day for an act of kindness. It is by the name Jesus Christ that this man stand here before you healed. This means the name Jesus Christ has power indeed. But only among those who are committed to the glory of God. Are you committed to the glory of God? Yes. If you are, listen. When we learn to use the name Jesus Christ according to the word of God, when we learn to use the name Jesus Christ according to the word of God in the power of the Holy Ghost, we have the secret which shook the world through the apostles. I am here today to do what I am born for. What I am living for and what I am going to die for. May God bless his word in your hearts. Amen. In Jesus' name.